the fat controller's engines. One evening, Thomas brought his last train to the junction. He went for a drink. I'm going to the big station, he said to Percy and Toby. So are we, they answered. Do you know, Percy went on, I think something's up. Toby looked up at the sky. Where? Down here, silly, laughed Thomas. How? asked Toby recently. Can something be up? If it's down. Look, said Thomas excitedly. Look! Seven engines from the other railway were coming along the line. Hello, Genty, whistled Percy. Hello, Pug. They're friends of mine, he explained. I don't know the others. Ginny and Pug whistled cheerfully as they puffed through the station. What is all this? asked Thomas. The fat controller's got a plan, answered Driver, and he's going to tell it to us. Come on. So they followed to the big station at the end of the line, where all the engines had gone. The fat controller was waiting for them there. The people of England, he said, read about us in the books, but I don't think that we are real. Shame, squeaked Percy. The fat controller glared. Percy subsided. Sure, he continued. I'm checking my engines to England to show them. Hooray, hooray, the Englands whistled. The fat controller held his ears. Shall I lunch? he bellowed. We start the day after tomorrow at 8 a.m. Meanwhile, if the engine have a car the come for the other railway to take your place, you will show them your work tomorrow. Next day, as Annie and Clarabelle were going to England, Thomas and Ginny practiced with some coaches. Thomas was excited. He began boasting about his race with Bertie. I roofed through the tunnel and stopped an inch from the buffers. Like this. Crash! The buffers broke. No one was hurt. Thomas's front was badly bent. They telephoned the fat controller. I'll send up some men, he said. But if they don't man show me some jam, we'll go to England without him. Next morning, the engines waited at the junction. Toby and Percy were each on a truck, and Duck had pushed them into place behind Edward. Henrietta stood on a siding. The fat controller called her a curiosity. I wouldn't dream of leaving you behind, he said. Uh, she felt very grand. Gordon, James, and Henry were in front. They whistled impatiently. The fat controller paced the platform. He looked at his watch. One more minute, he said, turning to the guard. Beep, 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 whistled Thomas and panted in the station. Annie and Clarabelle twittered anxiously. We hope we're not late. It, it isn't quite eight. Thomas? Chilmush, said the fat controller, staring. I'm most displeased with you. You nail up shut my arrangements. Thomas, abashed, arranged to himself, and the coaches behind duck, without saying a word. The fat controller climbed into Henrietta. The guard blew his whistle and waved his flag. The engines whistled. Look out, England, here we come! And the cavalcade puffed off. The engines stood side by side in a big airy shed. Hundreds of people came to see them and climbed in and out of their cabs every day. They liked it at first. But presently it felt very bored and were glad when it was time to go. The people along their line put the flags out and cleared them home. We are glad to see you, they said. Those others did their best, but they don't know our ways. Nothing can compare to the fat controller's engines.